Hello everyone, and welcome to my Bachelor Nation Today Update channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. When Rachel Lindsay followed Tia Maori's advice after divorcing Brian Abasolo, she felt stronger. After declaring her separation from Brian Abasolo in January, Rachel Lindsay discovered a confidant in Tia Maori. Don't look back, it will hold you back, she advised. In response to Maori's counsel, Lindsay, 39, told E. News on Tuesday, June 18, don't look at the future, it'll give you anxiety. Lindsay was going through a divorce at the time. Every day, stay in the present because every day you make it through and you get stronger, Maori also counseled Lindsay. The former bachelorette disclosed that she repeats this advice to herself every single morning. Lindsay said, I was trying to control the future and I was having so much anxiety in the moment she was speaking to me. As an Enneagram 8 and a Taurus, my greatest fear is losing control, which is where I currently find myself. She told me that, and it felt as like a weight had been taken off of me. It felt incredibly liberating. The former reality TV personality revealed that she has given up worrying about things I can't control. Lindsay is currently concentrating on her mental well-being and future plans. I just stay in the now and kind of like the serenity prayer. Well, I survived that day, and I'm stronger for it, she would say each day. Prior to this, Us Weekly verified that Abba Solo, 44, filed for Lindsay's divorce on January 2, citing December 31, 2023 as the date of separation. The couple married in August 2019 after becoming engaged during The Bachelorette's 13th season in 2017. Abba Solo posted a statement on Instagram shortly after word of their breakup leaked. He stated, If you've been following me for a while, you know I like to keep a safe space for our family and I don't like to put my personal affairs on social media. Many of you are aware of me as a chiropractor, but my proudest role to date is that of a spouse. Rachel and I have decided to part ways and start again after more than four years of marriage. Abasolo stated that he is a family man and that his parents have been married forever, therefore he acknowledged that the decision to separate was difficult. He went on, loving yourself and your partner sometimes means you have to let go. I wanted to get the straight scoop from the horse before the blog start inventing their own narratives. In closing, Abasolo requested solitude while he and his family figure out what comes next. Lindsay finally spoke out about the divorce a few days later. I didn't anticipate becoming emotional. Firstly, I would want to express my gratitude to everyone who got in touch. I'm still attempting to respond to messages. She stated as much on the January 5th edition of her podcast, Higher Learning. You just never know how great your circle is until you see all the people that reach out and love you, she added. If you've read the headlines, you've probably realized that things are tough right now, and you're probably thinking why I would even work. However, I must be honest with you, I need to take my mind off of myself, and the best way to accomplish so is to pursue my passion, which is, higher learning. At the time, Lindsay said she would elaborate after giving the separation some thought. She went on, I will eventually, but right now is not the time, I'm trying to take it day by day. Lindsay alluded to difficulty a few weeks before to the breakup when defending her and Abasolo's secretive relationship. In December 2023, she said on the podcast, The Vile Files, I just it was like, I want to keep this for ourselves. You know, marriage has ups and downs, but you never know when we're good or when we're not because we never put it out there. When I want to share something, I share it because I kind of want to keep it that way. As a lone practitioner, Brian leaves the house at 8 o'clock. He sometimes gets home around 9 or 9.30 o'clock at night. It's just the two of them, she said. Me, especially with all the extra time I have now that I'm not doing extra. And after that I go to events because I'm back in hustle mode and trying to obtain a second job. We're simply in two completely distinct locations, then. Lindsay disclosed that the two of them were attempting to establish a family, despite her admissions about their problems. At the time, she declared, we're working on having a kid, adding that she had huge baby fever. It's not always as simple as you would imagine. You believe it will happen when you're ready, but it never happens. Thus, that has also been a little difficult. Lindsay's legal team wrote in May court filings that US was able to get, 
Rachel has expressed her desire to resolve this matter quietly, without court intervention, by way of a global settlement, which is forthcoming. Until then, Brian stays in Rachel's house, and Rachel covers 90% of his costs. Lindsay is taking care of herself while she waits for the couple's July 10th court appearance. She said to E. News, I really want to do the work from within. Therefore, I'm taking steps to heal myself internally so that I can look better outside. The Bachelor Nation star mentioned prayer, meditation, and physical activity as components of her wellness regimen. Lindsay said, as I'm stepping into the summer, maybe we're dabbling in a little bit of hot girl summer, maybe not. That's stepping outside and just being one with nature, that's spending more time with family and friends. I dip a toe in. We'll watch and see. After Teresa Nist's divorce, Golden Bachelor Jerry Turner claims his direct messages are overflowing. After his divorce from Teresa Nist, Jerry Turner of the Golden Bachelor might not be prepared to get into a new relationship just yet but when he is, it seems like he will have plenty of choices. On Wednesday, June 19, Jerry, 72, told TMZ that in addition to getting direct messages from women on social media, he is also getting contacted in person by women to give him their phone numbers. This happens in public, including at wineries. Although he hasn't followed up with any of the connections yet, Jerry told the outlet he's embracing the numbers. Jerry expressed his gratitude for the gesture but cautioned that he prefers to meet people naturally and is wary of individuals who approach him first. Jerry has a few ideas about the kind of person he wants to meet when he decides to re-enter the dating scene. Jerry stated to TMZ that he is seeking a good friend and someone who loves adventure, travel, and mobility. In addition, he anticipated that his future partner would reside in Indiana, his home state. This update on Jerry's romantic life comes several months after he asked Teresa, 70, to marry him in the first season finale of The Golden Bachelor. Later, in January, at a live ABC television special, they exchanged vows. Us Weekly revealed that Jerry and Teresa had not moved in together months after getting married. In April, the couple declared their intention to part ways. During an April appearance on Good Morning America, Jerry stated, Teresa and I have had a number of heart-to-heart -heart conversations and we've looked closely at our situation, our living situation, and we've kind of come to the conclusion mutually that it's time for us to dissolve our marriage. Former The Bachelor contestant Anna Redman has apologized for posting an Auschwitz outfit inspiration video. In a post shared on Instagram stories, the 28-year-old shared what clothes she planned on wearing for each day of her upcoming trip to Poland, including the outfit she was going to wear to the 16th stop on her list, the Nazi concentration camp Auschwitz, where an estimated 1.1 million people were killed during the Holocaust. She shared with her 114,000 Instagram followers a photo of her in a black dress and sneakers, her planned outfit for the outing. She captioned the photo, the best packing, hack. Is somebody going to match my freak? In her comment section, critics slammed her for sharing something so tone deaf. You know what's embarrassing, one person wrote. How tone deaf you are to post an Auschwitz outfit on your stories.